Oh, hey, question of the day. Uh, what is your favorite part of a uh, presentation? Is it the art or the components? What games do you like to really combo these two things perfectly, both the components and the art themselves, to make this wonderful package? All in all, what is your favorite packaged components, whatever, uh, complete total package, Lex Luger, uh, um, game that you can think of because today we're talking about a game that has some neat uh, components as well as some interesting things it does with its art so we're taking a look today at zoned out and no that is not describing what you do when an economics lecture comes on you're just like no we're talking about zoned out a game all about zoning your uh, city your town your area and rezoning and changing it to where you can score the most points at the end of the game like most games Let's take a look right now at how Zoned Out plays, then we'll come back up and talk final thoughts right now. So here's Zoned Out, let's take a look at what's inside it. So the majority of everything you need is your colors plastic building pieces and there are I believe 45 of these because you change it based on player count and when playing with two players you use all 45. But these are nice little things that will sit on the table vertically like that and it just looks good because they do stack quite perfectly. Uh, the idea of the game though is you're going to be playing cards out onto this main neighborhood. You're going to draw four cards initially put the uh, the parking lots in the middle and then cover it with the downtown district. You're then gonna get three cards in your hand. The first player gets a little bit different of a, of a perk. They get uh, to put their city manager out first with one less card or one fewer card in their hand. Uh, so let's just say I wanna put him here. And the reason that matters, I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, you then have these cards that are basically the same as those cards right there. They have four sections on them, one type of building, uh, usually two types of building, a negative and a positive. Now, some of those negatives are minus two, some of the positives are plus two, but most of them are plus one or minus one. There are some wild types of buildings as well. They're not wild types of buildings, they're wild as far as size, because you will notice that this yellow building has two buildings on it, whereas, oh, that's great, they both, okay. This blue building has one building, this one has two buildings. That actually determines how many of your plastic cubes you would put on that building whenever you score it. Uh, and the way that scoring works we'll talk about in just a few minutes. But you're going to play one of these cards out. Now, when you play a card, you have to cover up something on a card. It has to be at least one square. There are a couple of finicky little rules about where you can and can't put them. Basically, you can't cover up someone else's zone. You can't some cover somewhere that's already been rezoned. But let's just say I'm trying to build a yellow segment here. I would put this card here. So now there are two adjacent yellow buildings or yellow uh, city blocks next to each other. As long as you cover at least one square, then you're in the right space. Now, I love how the, the streets line up. So I would then move my street manager, city manager, onto that spot. Now, when you move him, you Im immediately score if you moved off of somewhere that is no longer connected to the place you moved to. So, for instance, I would move out of here into this. I would then score this blue area. Now, again, right now it's currently just one. It's based on a, uh, a chart. You know, one is one point, two is three, etc. But what you're ideally trying to do though, and you'll draw back up at the end of your turn, you're ideally trying to get this to where you're starting to build out this area to where you can mitigate the losses and add additional pluses. So you could do something like this even. And on your turn, again, this is multiple turns worth, but you're gonna keep taking these cards and putting them out there to where, so when we finally do score, okay, so let's just say I move here now. So I move to this bottom space down here, it is not, the yellow anymore. So then what I do is I count all the spaces that are adjacent in that yellow zone now. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Then add up, you look at the chart, so five, that's 15 points. Then you add any parks and any parks adjacent to the park. So even though this one doesn't touch because it touches this one, it touches this one, it counts. So we have 15 points, 16, 17, 18, 19 points minus one for that parking lot. So you get those points, basically just little point tokens, it's essentially money. You'll then stack these tokens onto everywhere that just scored, putting ones on ones, twos on twos, and threes on threes. The last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check the quadrant 
of the downtown area. So this is obviously this quadrant here, and you'll put a space on that skyscraper. This middle section is a majority thing. Basically, at the end of the game, whoever has the most plastic pieces in each of these quadrants for the skyscrapers will receive, uh, I believe it's five points and then one point or something like that yeah, for a first and second place tie. But it's a good amount of points just you get from that. You also have, and I'm going to clear the board now, you also have these really great goal cards. Everybody gets a set number of private cards, but there are public objective cards that will go out as well. So this one says, score one victory point for each light commercial block you develop. Now, everyone can see this. Everyone knows that. The interesting thing is everybody scores every goal card, including your private ones, and you get to score your opponent's private ones. Plus, you all get to score the, the public ones in the middle. So after you've scored your points during the game for scoring like normal, you'll check these scoring cards. And there are a ton of these. I mean, there are things like that where it's uh, a point per single level commercial developments you've done, the majority of blues, the majority of all these other things. There's a lot of little finicky things. But the point is you're going to be building your city out, building your zones out to where you have the most points based on what you've put out here. And that is how you play zoned out. So that's zoned out. Basically, you're placing those cards out there, you're overlapping them, you're stacking up your plastic pieces until one of the triggers happens. Now, let's talk, first of all, about presentation. We always do this first when it comes to the reviews that we do here, the presentation of the game. Number one, I love the way those little plastic pieces look on the board. When you see the, this from the side angle, and I'll, you know, you're seeing that now with these pictures I took, really cool look. Like I love games that are not just two-dimensional, they're three-dimensional, right? They, they, you can look across the table and they look very nice. So it's got a very nice appeal to it when you walk past this at a table. So those little plastic components are very nice. You could have done those with cardboard chits, the choice to do with the plastic. I know a little bit more expensive, but very nice. I like the way those look. I like the way they feel. I like the way they stack. And I like the way that if you play with all of them, you can do a perfect one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is. I don't, the math is. But you can do a nice little gradient down. That's just me when I'm zoning out on the sideboard when it's someone else's turn. But point being this, the art of the cards, while pretty straightforward, just little cities and stuff, is interesting, but what makes it more interesting is the fact that you use the art, or you use the cards, I should say, those perfectly square cards with the quadrants on them, to overlap and lay over and change the zone to where you're actually rezoning an area. You are actually a city manager changing what's gonna happen in this city. You know, hopefully, bring in more industry or more commercial or maybe you want to build a nice residential neighborhood and I love the way that you have control over that where you place those cards and it visually changes the board it visually changes the neighborhood the city the town whatever that's a cool concept to me now that plays into the mechanics themselves of actually going through and actually um, you know playing around with the game itself of the actual like you know playing the cards and stuff like that I like the card basedness. I like the fact that you can redraw if you just don't like the hand that you have. I like the, uh, I like the moving. I like the kind of strategery there, uh, putting your city manager all over the board. But what I really like is the fact that all of the objectives score for every person, but you don't know what everyone's is. That's cool to me. Everyone has an advantage of knowing what a couple objectives are they can play towards. You can also watch what other people are doing. See, hmm, they're building those a lot. Maybe I should build towards that too, so I can score some points. You also have the public objectives that you know everyone knows. So there's the the, the idea of having no knowledge, perfect knowledge, and uh, private knowledge is really cool. I think that's a great uh, a great play uh, when it comes to goal cards. The fact that not just my card, your card, or just a public card, but the mixture of the two. I think that's a really interesting byplay of goals and things like that. So as far as that goes, nice. I like the way the game scores. I like if you can build up your area, uh, I believe it's at most nine, you can score a ton of points and it can happen quick. You can ramp up those points and you can go from having six points, five points, whatever, to whoosh, pretty inc incredibly quick. So I like that. Um, I like the speed at which it plays. It plays very quick. I mean, the only thing that slows down is when you go, okay, now I've got to score two, one, three, three, two, one. And then you go, okay, I've got one, two, three, five, check the chart. And then you go plus one, plus one, plus one, minus two, minus two, minus plus one. That, that can be a little bit confusing. And it's not easy to understand the concepts when you go into this. You look at the box, you look at the game, you go, oh, this would be simple. It's just a building game. But it's actually a little bit deeper and harder to get into at first than you might seem. It's not... It's not the easiest game to kind of teach all those concepts quickly. So I will say that. But all in all, it's a very enjoyable experience. I would recommend Zoned Out if you like city laying games, city playing games, building up games. I uh, really enjoyed this one. thought it was a fun one. I'm going to keep it in the collection because it's uh, just, I, 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 it's, it does 
again, I've been saying this a lot lately, but it plays really well within the world it creates. It does a good job of creating this world of game rules, and it sticks to those rules. There's not superfluous rules. You're like, well, what is that here for? I guess that was just they needed something, uh, one thing fixed in playtest. You know, everything feels nicely hammered out. It feels really well done. So I'm a big fan of Zoned Out. Uh, fun game, good-looking game, both top to bottom and across the table. That's just that's such a plus for me. But Zoned Out is a great city building, uh, city spanning game, table spanning game about growing your city. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to check out our other videos and reviews, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Uh, tomorrow night, let's see, today is, yeah, tomorrow night we're doing a live chat, live daily chat, and Carla will be the co-host, you know, the brains of the operation. So we will see you there. Till next time, we'll see. I just said the same thing twice, but whatever.